Hello Sheriff, welcome to Springville, Utah. Uh, we're kind of down here in the uh, black room and uh, the crocker sits here as it has for over a decade. A decade? And close to the same state <laughs> it's always been. Tay Herrera did a wonderful job of engraving the tank. And um, so we've got a lot of original parts. And Latin, Jim Latin has uh, a hemi head motor for me. It's a 1938 that I'll be popping in that soon. And then we got a few of the club cuts on the walls. The one I think that's most interesting is this one. This one down here is kind of fun. It's this club creepers. And um, these guys, I believe, were uh, they were motorcycle, but they were probably a black club. All right. And kind of a strange deal here. And then when we got into this one, I never could figure out the history on this one until somebody told me to watch this certain movie. And this is a fictional club. This was literally a uh, one of those kind of deals that was a prop uh -huh. made for Hollywood and in one of the many lousy movies made in the 70s, yeah. this was one of those clubs yeah. that uh, showed up. And, and, you, and you'd be surprised how many um, groupings of 20 or 30 club cuts just end up on eBay that were really film props and they were yeah. never really a club, you know. Uh, and, and I've kind of slowed down on buying any of these things anymore because there's a certain fellow on eBay that is making counterfeits. Mm -hmm. and, and they're good because he's buying original denim and he's finding old orphan patches and he's kind of sewing them together. So okay. in reality, they're, they're kind of real, but they're more of a decoupage than they are a vest that ever existed with any provenance, you know. But how about sinners? The sinners, well, we are, we're okay with those. These, the sinners are more of like the Girl Scouts than the uh, motorcycle club. You know? Okay. <laughs> and on the floor, you just found some uh, extra collectors. Yeah, this is kind of neat. This one's special. You know, this was a, this was an old Steve McQueen, the kitty cat on there, and this was probably a woman's. Flossie was her name. Uh huh. And uh, there's uh, this one is quite extraordinary. Look at this one. This is Fritz. Indian motorcycle, uh, Reading, Pennsylvania. And so I actually, old are uh, these? This is early. This is, if you look at this one, this is not, probably 1920s, if not wow. 19 teens. And um, it's got the Indian on the front. Yeah. And if you see the big cut right here out of it, I've got the guy's helmet, his gloves, and his underwear. <laughs> and his underwear, he yeah. wore full, uh, full length underwear, bottoms and tops. And he must have crashed and received some kind of a wound right here because they're stained right in this groin area. Okay. And, and so they, they literally must have just kind of cut the sweater off and, and turned it away. But it's funny to see that I have, and it might be laying here, the other garment. This is like cold case. Yeah. yeah I mean, there's his, there's his britches there. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you look at uh, his, his, oh, there we go, see? Yeah. Here is his undergarment, and there it too is cut away, see? So that kind of is a, is a symbol of, you know, probably this was removed from him as he laid there in agony, you know? Case closed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then you get the different, you know, you get the different ones, these more of these like, um, uh, you know, uh, probably, I would guess, right when polyester was getting hot, mm. you know, and this nice stretchable, breathable stuff. And then you go back to like the gabardine, you know, which would have been clear 50s and, and very... Aren't you trace these style. on the eBay or where do you find them? Well, you know, you really find them everywhere. You find them at motorcycle swap meets, you find them at, uh, at, the, at the desert industries, you find them at the, um, the Goodwills, the uh, th thrift clothing stores. And, and for the longest time, I could get them from other vintage clothing uh, collectors. And I'd find like a nice choice piece of like new old stock denim, which they just praised and gave all the value to. Yeah. And as soon as they saw a vest with the sleeves cut off and patches, it was really a bottom, bottom feeder piece, you know? Okay. And so for a while, I was kind of the guy that would go, hey, this guy buys this junk and, and he'll trade good stuff for it. And then all of a sudden, they, uh, they, they kind of caught on to, oh, well, this junk actually has some pretty nice folk art value to it. Yeah. And so those kind of days are over of me just, you know, really it was out there and it was, it was discarded. And it was not being appreciated by um, the collectors. It was not being appreciated by the motorcycle public in general. And it was not being appreciated by the clubs themselves. Oh. Now it's time to come around where these guys are reminiscing or they're kind of seeing that, that oh, I saw one of those go on eBay for a thousand bucks. Oh, geez, I gave mine away and all of a sudden they want it back type of deal. So it's come full circle. Yep. And so it used to be fun 
to try to preserve a history that was being neglected to a point where now I'm in these political quagmires as to why I have this piece. Yeah. And, and they don't like your explanation of I paid four dollars at the Goodwill for it. You know, and then they say, uh, you know, well, you're not a member of the club, you shouldn't have it. And uh -huh. I say, well, then you should get a hold of the club member that gave it to Goodwill and punish him accordingly. But I was just a guy that bought a scrap, you know. Uh, the lady behind me wanted to make a quilt out of it. Yeah. So be thankful I got it, you know. So when you're not collecting this, uh, where's... We would like to take a really sneak preview of what, where you do your we'll, we'll go daily into, work. We'll maybe go into the sculpting room, but there's certain areas that'll be off limits. Okay, we will respect that, sir. <laughs> Does that work? Okay.